And today we're baptizing one of our children's ministry kids at the end of service along with Abby. And we're excited about that. It's going to be a great close to this powerful day in the spirit. Amen. Uh, we have a lot of uh, <clears throat> guests with us today, first time. And we welcome you so much with open arms. We just love it when you find your way here, the Lord leads you here, and, and you get to experience this in the room with us. Uh, many times people will watch us online for a few weeks and get warmed up to us. But if you just came cold turkey, <clears throat> I hope you're all right now. I hope you're doing okay with it. Um, they used to say, we're not always like this, sometimes we're worse. <laughs> but every Sunday's a different experience because we, we don't, we, we try to implement tradition where tradition is appropriate, and then we try to be flexible to the flow of the Holy Spirit because the Spirit in Scripture is compared to fire, wind, and, and wind isn't wind if it's dead and still. It's just no wind. Wind is wind because it's moving. And the Holy Spirit is a moving spirit. God is a moving God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But he's always moving in the earth. The Spirit of God moved upon the waters. And that's how we all got here. That's why we have a habitable planet amen and i've never seen a fire just stop and stand still and stare at you it's always carrying on isn't it i just love being around fire just i've, I've often said don't don't worry about the fire in the house there will always be enough wet blankets to put it out amen <laughs> Keep it under control. Look at your neighbor say, don't be a wet blanket. Amen. Let the wind blow, dry up the wet blankets, and let the fire fall and burn it up. Friday we had a work day and we cleaned out attics. Dave, you'd be so proud. No, you wouldn't. Dave would be upset because we couldn't let Dave come. We had to have him uh, sequestered to his family. Because we burn stuff. But old stuff, you know, they say if you haven't used it in two years and you don't know anybody you can give it to that would make good use of it, it's probably not going to benefit you much. Get rid of it. And so we did what they, they say, store away, give away, and throw away. And so we got our, our stowaway much more organized in our giveaway. Some people took some things, and we got a whole lot of throwaway going on around here. And there was a pile up about the bottom of that screen out there in the back, as big as three or four automobiles around. And uh, we put that thing, lit that thing yesterday, and it's gone. <laughs> Fire burned it up. May the fire of God burn up all the junk in our lives and clean us out and rid us of our habits and attitudes and all that stuff. Amen? So if you were here for that work day, I want you to stand up. I know you don't want to, but I want you to. I want all of you to look at these guys and give them a big old hand because they assisted us getting this place straightened around. Thank you. And, and there were about 10 all together, and uh, some are shy. And I won't accuse the others of anything else. But we had so much fun. They worked and worked and worked and worked. I wore them out. I just wore them out. I mean, I, they slept good Friday night. She's got her opinion. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving week, everybody. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you. 
We're going to uh, turn in our Bible to Luke 17 and verse 11 today, and I hope you have a Bible with you. We, we kind of encourage the Pages Bible. I preach from a, a device that allows me to scroll quickly because I know you don't want to sit here all day, but I can do more with my device than I can with my Pages Bible, but if you read your Bible at home, read your Pages Bible so your children know what you're doing. Right. Amen. And your spouse knows what you're doing. Amen. Anyway, uh, Luke 17, 11. So when I, I wanna, my title today is going to be, Thank You, Jesus, for the Cross. I don't know how long it's been since you said those words out of your mouth, but let's say them together. Thank You, Jesus, for the Cross. When I was, you know, there's something about the word thank you. You know, your, your children, one of the first things you teach them when they're little is to say thank you, right? We even do it in Spanish just to make sure we, you know, really get it in there. And so you teach them to say thank you. Well, when I was about three, my dad and mom were trying to teach me to say thank you. So what? What every parent says is someone gives you something and they say, okay, what do you say? Right? right. So and that's, that's my message to you today is what are you supposed to say? Thank you. Well, my dad tried that with me and uh, a gentleman handed me a piece of gum when I was little, I liked chewing gum. He handed me a piece of gum, and I opened it up. My dad said, what do you say? I looked up at him. I said, you got any more? <laughs> I hadn't quite picked up on what to say yet, but I learned quickly what to say. An entitled generation is in trouble. At the core of most social issues is greed and ungrateful hearts. How many of you have seen that cartoon with that inflatable turkey that's got the inflatable Santa and he's pinned him to the ground, and he says, wait your turn. <laughs> I think that's how a turkey sounds. I'm not sure. But you've seen that little meme or cartoon. For whatever reason, probably mostly greed and commercialization of a holiday, Christmas decorations are being put up in August, and you walk in the store, and pumpkin spice is not even on the coffee menu yet, and there's already pictures of Santa and trees and ribbons and bows, and you certainly aren't going to get to have your Thanksgiving dinner without a bunch of Christmas already now, I'm not against Christmas. Matter of fact, I think Jesus ought to be born in your heart every day of the year. Yeah. All right? But the commercialization of our precious, sacred, holy holiday called Christmas has gotten way out of hand. And people feel way too much pressure to spend money that they don't have. Amen? And and we've we've kind of gotten caught up in in the the greed side and the and the the negative side of Christmas if we're not careful. So let me just say in here before Thanksgiving has even come, take a deep breath and and think about and ponder what you can do this year to rein in your your Christmas uh, lusts and and desires and and all of that. And, and make it more about Jesus than about yourself. Amen? So, early on uh, 
Paula exemplified a, a real love for children. And it took us a, a while to conceive in our uh, marriage, and God gave us our own child. But prior to that, Paula was just borrowing and adopting kids. We, we, we weren't even married yet, and she had already taken Andy, her aunt's little girl, her first cousin. She was two, and she would... They let her come to Mississippi from Kentucky to stay at our house after we got married. I mean, that's how close Paula and Andy had become, and they're still close to this day. They just took a trip to Texas together a couple of weeks ago, and she just always loved children. But all of us as adults, you know that feeling when you give a child something and it just lights them up. They're like, ah, right? Now, some children, at different ages, it takes different things. So Paula gets them when they're small enough that a sucker lights them up, <laughs> right? And it seems like I get to have them when it takes a four-wheeler to light them. You know what I mean? That's my role. But I still love it, and I'll still buy the four-wheeler and the go-kart and the dirt bike and the treehouse, right? I mean... Paula hinted the other day that I was going to build Simeon an outbuilding for his cars and tools and stuff. And he lit up. Oh, come on, Papa. Let's get the hammers. I'm like, eh, not, not going to build it today. <laughs> but when you're four, if you're going to do it, today's the day you're going to do it. When you're four. But we all love that feeling. Did you know? God loves that feeling of lighting you up with gratitude. He loves to push your gratitude buttons. He loves to see you come into his house on Sunday morning and the music starts playing and you just light up. Yes, God is good. Oh, man, there is joy in the house of the Lord. He loves that. And I want to encourage you today. That that's where we all need to stay in our relationship with the Lord. That the least little things light us up. See, God's not interested in how hard you are to impress. Did you know that? You don't appear smart to God. Did you know that? He's not impressed with how unimpressed you are with people's gifts and talents and actions and abilities and no he loves it except you become as a little child you'll in no way enter my kingdom i think one of the things we need to get like a little child in is our gratitude for the little things in life don't let it take much to light you up amen early on in our relationship with jack and betsy schumacher they had children, and Paula loves children, and she loved to buy for Michaela and JB and Gabriella because they were always so grateful. All three of them would give you the best reaction. Thank you. It would be a t-shirt, or just it could be something little, or it could be something big. It didn't matter. It wasn't about the size of it. It was about the fact that Paula thought of them and loved them and put something from her hand into their hand, and they lit up. And to this day, we can't go on vacation without getting them or their kids. It's, it's been a few years. <laughs> Souvenirs. Because we love it when people are grateful. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, everybody say thank you. Thank you. Turn to Luke 11, uh, 17, 11. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood 
afar off. Now, the reason they stood afar off was because lepers were not to be touched. You, you weren't supposed to get near them because of the contagiousness of this disease. It was, they didn't know it, but they were social distancing <laughs> way back then. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now we could stop right there and preach a message on as they went. Some of us need to just obey the simple command of the Lord and be healed as they went. They just did what he said. He didn't say a magic word. He didn't quote a whole bunch of scriptures. He didn't put anything on them. He just said, go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, as they went, some of you, you're wondering, what should I do? When am I going to get healed? How am I going to get this? I need to, you know, I heard so-and-so is going to be in Dallas. I think I'll fly over there and listen to him. If the Holy Spirit tells you to fly to Dallas, fly to Dallas. But don't go searching for your healing. Just do what he said. And as they went, I mean, you might be vacuuming the sanctuary, and all of a sudden that knee pain's gone. What happened? I just was, as I went. Most of my miracles in my life happened as I went. I got healed of severe allergies. I mean, instantly healed. It, didn't, it wasn't just one of the, oh, well, you just da-da-da. No. I had allergies, bad allergies, tested for allergies. Now I don't have any allergies, zero, no allergies. And at the age 27, as I went to teach a home Bible study, I was healed. Just, I wasn't standing in front of a celebrity Christian pouring oil on people. I didn't drive anywhere to hear, and I'm not against some of that, but a lot of it's not necessary if you just obey the Lord. And do, okay, that's not my message. I'm not going to preach that. But anyway, I thank God that as I went, I was healed. Whew, I can't tell you what a relief it is to be healed. And you can too. Verse 15. And one of them, when he saw, now remember there was ten of them, right? And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. And with a loud voice, he had my religion. Loud voice. I got that religion. I got that anointing that he got. Loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet. Now remember, he was afar off. He was social distancing. But as he went... He got healed and cleansed, and he came back to Jesus, and there was no more social distancing. He fell at his feet and worshiped him and praised God and gave him thanks for what he had done. Hallelujah. Woo. And it says, and he was a Samaritan. If you know anything about the culture of that time, he would have been an outcast to say the least. You think racism's bad in some parts of this country? My lands. Jews and Samaritans were like, Argh. it was bad. It was ugly. But Jesus healed him, and he gave thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Where are, were there not ten that were healed? But where are the nine there are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. In other words, I would have expected more out of my fellow kinsmen, out of my native people, but they are not thankful. 
as is this stranger giving thanks to God. And he said to him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. All of them lifted up their voices and cried out for mercy. All of them were obedient to go as they went and be healed. But one saw and returned. One gave thanks. Look at your neighbor and say, be the one. Be the one. And Jesus, in the last verse of this passage, equated thanksgiving or gratitude with faith. Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. It was a distinguishing word that he didn't speak of the others about. We don't know that the others were made whole. There's a difference in being healed and being made whole. See, you've got to understand the trauma of living a leprous life. Some of you have been bullied. Some of you have been, you have a a handicap or deformity or something that people made fun of you about or you were bullied as a child or you were picked on or you felt left out. Not many of us in this room were really all that cool and popular, just so you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I never had that kind of privilege or whatever. But if you did, praise God for you. Amen? (laughs) But most of us had issues growing up. We had situations. Well, a leper, especially a Samaritan leper that had been thrown in with the non-Samaritan crowd, had issues. You see what I'm saying? Emotional trauma, the the trauma of not being able to play with the other kids, the trauma of having to sit out for meals and, and, and be cast away. No human being has ever been made to endure such torture. That's not the essence of human existence, that we be isolated and quarantined and all of that kind of stuff. No, that's not normal. That's not right. And these lepers were traumatized. They were hurt. You think, you think you got issues. These guys had some issues. But when Jesus looked at him and said, Thy faith has made thee whole, I believe every bit of trauma that had ever come on him, every bit of rejection that they, that man had ever uh, experienced, every bit of the being pushed away from the table, all of those fears and anxiety, it was all gone in a moment because Jesus spoke. And that, that man all of a sudden was free. Somebody said to me this morning, it feels good to be free. The truth makes you free. Amen? Amen? So, when you get anything good, it's important that you recognize the source. Amen? See, the person handing you something, they are the vessel through which that came. They have earned and purchased and thought of you and gave to you. Amen? But... They're not the ultimate source. So anytime you say thank you, I want to help us take it another step. Come up here, Levi. Levi's my buddy. Thank you, Levi, for being brave and courageous. Levi got baptized not too long ago. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome home. The Sunday he got baptized, I was wearing this necktie. And he said, hey, 
I like that tie. I went home and rolled it up and put it in my drawer, and I waited for today. That's your tie. You're welcome. Thank him. Amen. Thank God, because God is the source that allowed me the possessions to purchase that necktie if I purchased it. Somebody may have given it to me, and I forgot. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you're here today or if you're watching online and that was the tie you gave me, <clears throat> it's in good hands now. It's reaching its purpose and destiny in God. In Levi. Amen? But all glory goes to God. Jesus didn't holler and say, hey, y'all need to give me thanks. He just let him go. He said, Where, where'd they go? What happened? You're the one. You're, <clears throat> you're the one doing the right thing. You're, this is normal. That's not. This is acceptable. That's not acceptable. In times of struggle, I've, I'm certainly not one to talk about hard times or a hard life or anything, but I've, I've had some pain in my life. I had acute bronchial asthma until I was 13 and God healed me. I, I was bit by a snake when I was 14, and if you've never been bit by a snake, I'll just let, go ahead and let you know it hurts. <laughs> And they say childbirth is worse. I'm not going to have no babies. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. I'm just not even going to try. Uh, <laughs> that hurts. But any time I've ever been in pain in my life, somehow, I don't know why, but the squeezing of pain, out of my mouth comes the words, Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. It just naturally comes out. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Cut my finger off with a circular saw when I was 12. I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's just natural. I don't know if it's because that's what my grandpappy did and my, my daddy did and my mama did, but it just came out of me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We should instill in our children and we should form a habit in our life that no matter what's going on in our life, that we could get those words out of our spirit, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I, when I finish my course, when I've run my race, I want to lay down and the last words that come out of my lungs and out of my lips, thank you, Jesus. Why would you say thank you for pain? No, it's not for pain. See, I'm going to skip a couple verses, Kim. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything... Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Didn't say for everything give thanks. Well, that's sadistic to be thanking God for pain or your car breaking down. Well, thank you, Lord, my car broke down. Uh, I'm not really thankful for my car breaking down, but I'm thankful in the situation. I got chewed out at work and somebody lied on me and told my boss something I did that I didn't do. In. Got incarcerated for a crime somebody else committed. In. Everything. Give thanks. Ended up in a in a bad situation around people that I shouldn't have been around in everything give thanks see 
you don't have to have any money in your pocketbook to give thanks. You can be grateful when the, the color of your online banking goes from black to red. I hate it when that happens. But in everything, give thanks. When you open up your electric bill, Jack, and it's $70 more than it's supposed to be a month, you're not thankful for the increase, but you're thankful for electricity. And somewhere people are paying more for their same electricity. And in everything, give thanks. I tell you what, I remember <clears throat> where I was. You, you know, when you hear the voice of the Lord, you remember where you were. At least that's how it works for me. And I've only heard a handful of times what I call the voice of the Lord. But I remember where I was. I was going through some dark depression. I was in a low, low place in my life. And it w wasn't God's fault. It wasn't your fault. So I ain't talking about you. <laughs> you didn't throw me into depression. It wasn't my wife's fault. Quit pointing at her. She didn't do it. <clears throat> But the enemy had put me under attack and had put his arrows at me and some found a chink in my armor here and there. And you know what I'm saying? I, I was down. I was low. And I remember the car I was driving and where I was on Columbus Street on the north end of Lancaster when I heard the Lord say, what would it take to make you happy? It chilled me to my bones. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. Oh. And then I begin to think, uh, maybe, I, maybe I need to answer this question. Uh, God don't need to know, but uh, maybe I need to answer this question in my own heart. What is it that I, my expectations have skewed my view of gratitude? Help me, God. Well, whew. what would it take to make you happy? a good question <clears throat> maybe at Christmas time you and I don't know if this works anymore or not it's been a few years since we got into this but take your children down to see some Appalachian homes take your children and walk through the halls of children's hospital and pray pass out candy I don't know what it would take to bring a little bit of reality to your house, but the children need to know they are blessed. If you're sitting in this room today, whether you put your name on the angel tree or whether you're taking an angel to go shop for, either way, you're blessed. You're blessed. Oh, yeah. Sit down and talk to Hannah if you had time. She can put Christmas in perspective for you. <clears throat> so real quick, I'm going to close. Things that hinder our gratitude. Hardness of heart. Pride. It's hard to be grateful when you're filled up with your own self and pride. Envy. Envy is an enemy to gratitude. Jealousy. You know, it, it's just, the, I think it was the Apostle Paul that wrote, if you compare yourselves among yourselves, you're of all men most unwise. You start looking at other people, and your mind will just do what, it'll play tricks. <clears throat> you know, I, I say we, you know, look at some folks that are worse off. But by the same token, <clears throat> you start looking at people that are better off. And it messes you up. Amen? Unforgiveness. 
can hinder gratitude. Just the simple blessing of abundance can be a stumbling block to true gratitude. How many of you just be willing to raise your hand and admit, I grew up kind of poor? That's probably the majority of us grew up poor. We had indoor plumbing at my house. But most of the people in our church didn't. My dad was a full-time pastor, and I looked up some of the tithing records from 1963 and 64 and 65. I didn't know it, but we were poor, real poor. I mean, I added up four weeks of that, and I looked at the amount of rent they were paying, and I was like, hmm. He was a lot more frugal than I am. I want you to turn in your Bible to Psalm 136. And you won't need to read from your Bible because I'm going to use the New Living Translation. But I want you to mark that page in your Bible if you haven't already. Highlight it. put Put a piece of cardboard or paper or ribbon or something in that page. How many of you's Bible has that little ribbon that's stuck in the top you pull down in the middle take that thing and move it out of your favorite verse and put it in Psalm 136 for the next week will you do that with me look at your neighbor and say I'm going to do my homework so we're going to today we're going to do a read and respond have you ever been to church where they did read and respond yes It's awesome. We've done it here a few times. It's not a tradition here, but we're going to do it today. And you're going to look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to get loud. I'm going to get loud. So if you got earplugs from the music, you might want to put them back in. So I'm going to read a line, and your response will be today, His faithful love endures forever. Let's practice that line real quick. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights. The sun to rule the day. And the moon and the stars to rule the night. His faithful love. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt. He brought Israel out of Egypt. He acted with a strong hand and powerful arm. Give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea. He led Israel safely through. But he hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. Give thanks to him who led his people through the wilderness. Give thanks to him who struck down mighty kings. He killed powerful kings. Sihon, king of the Amorites. And Og, king of Bashan. God gave the land of these kings as an inheritance, a special possession to his servant Israel. He remembered us in our weaknesses. He saved us from our enemies. He gives food to every living thing. Give thanks to the God of heaven.
His faithful love endures forever. Somebody say amen. amen. This psalm was written before God came wrapped in a swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This psalm was written before Gethsemane. This psalm was written before Jesus willingly took 39 stripes for the healing of my sicknesses. This psalm was written before the cross where he gave up his perfect sinless life for my transgressions. I admonish you today to witness and acknowledge God in every situation. In everything, give thanks. If there were ever a generation that ought to be thankful, it's us. Our forefathers fought the British to give us freedom to worship God in our own way. Our forefathers fought the Germans and defeated Hitler. Our forefathers built railroads and highways with their bare hands. Slept under the stars to ensure our freedom and find freedom for generations. I'm grateful. Anyone who's suffering from physical or mental illness it might help us to read about the martyrs. It might help us to read stories about the settlers of this great land. Perspective is everything when it comes to gratitude. We've all tried this little trick on our children, trying to get them to eat their food that was on their plate that we paid for and prepared and they just did not want. And when Lindsay was about two, I decided to take my mom and dad's admonition for me at two and apply it to her at two. And I said, Lindsay, you need to eat those peas because there are starving children in China. Her little eyes looked up at me and she said, well, I guess that's just the way the ball bounces. Sailor will talk. Perspective didn't work on Lindsay, but we need perspective. Nothing will give you perspective like a message on the cross about the cross. Nothing will give you perspective like watching the Passion of the Christ movie. So I want to help you get perspective we do things around here in the 21 number a lot this is your homework for the week of thanksgiving I want you to write down 21 things for which you should give thanks Abby if you want to go ahead uh, this would be a good time for you to get ready and Knox, is he already, he's, he's in class, get him ready. Write down 21 things for which you are grateful. They can be small or great. Put it on paper where you can read it. And I want you to write down, right now, write down this line. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. That's how you're going to start each of those 21 statements of thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And then put in the blank what it is that you're thankful for. 
times 21. And do them one at a time, starting with, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, and having your family respond with his faithful love endures forever. Psalmist David wrote Psalm 136. That's your pattern. You're going to be the psalmist this week with your family. And you're going to write your Psalm 136. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Fill in the blank with what you're thankful for. His faithful love endures forever. You get to write your own chapter this week. I think that would be awesome, don't you? I think that's the best way. And then Thanksgiving Day, either prior to your dinner or when you get up in the morning or at some point in the day when you've got your loved ones nearby you, pull that 21 list out and say, here's what we're going to do, family. And do a read and response with your family. You may have other traditions you'll add to that. I'm not trying to take away or change your family tradition. Go ahead with whatever it is you're doing. But I, I want to help us get jump start a little bit. And if you know someone that's not here, share this with them. And I would love to see some of those posted on Facebook. I would love to see some of those sent to the church on the email or put in on the website. I think that would be awesome. We're going to sing in just a moment some of the old songs of thanks to the Lord. But right now, I want to look you in the eye, and those of you watching online, and I want to say thank you. I want to start my Thanksgiving week. First, we gave thanks to God. And secondly, I want to thank you. Thank you, River Church. Thank you for your love. There's not a day that I walk into this place that I don't get love. I was in here yesterday just doing some work. Got a big old hug from someone using the building for a baby shower. Just got loved on from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. I felt loved. I already got a hug this morning from William, Aubrey Jr. Love, thank you for your love. Thank you for your prayer. A few, few of my friends in the church text me, Pastor, I'm praying for you. Ron, you know what I'm saying. That means a lot. That means a lot. I trust that. I believe that. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your loyalty to the service of the Lord. That you're not divided and you're not serving other gods, but you're loyal to him and loyal to the river and loyal to Paula and I in your relationship. Thank you for loyalty. Thank you for your service. Many hands makes light work, they say, and so many of you are the hands and feet of Jesus out in the community, in this building, house to house, caring for each other and serving each other. Thank you. Thank you for your giving. The black boxes on the wall say holy unto the Lord. Tithes and offerings. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be. I recognize your heart every week. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. This is a sharing house. We're the children of the Lord and we share. We share in grief and sorrow. We share in pain and we share in...
prosperity and blessing in this house. Thank you. Thank you for your dedication. You signed on at Pathways and you've been dedicated to what you signed on to. You signed on to a grow group and you're dedicated to do that and follow through with that. You signed on to the praise team and you, you're, you're here. You're up here when you don't feel good. You're still up here. You're dedicated. I catch people in the act of cleaning. Thank you. Thank you for your sincerity. Amen. Did you know lost sinners can see right through your, your fake Christianity? But I'm looking at some folks that are sincere in their faith, in their love. You're sincere. You, you tell me when you don't believe. You tell me when you think it's all smoke and mirror. You just tell me. Come right out and tell me. Pastor, I don't know if I believe this or not. That's sincerity. Thank you for your sincerity. Thank you for watching online. Amen. Amen. See, I can't see you're there. So you could watch or not watch. But thank you for watching. Amen. Look at somebody and just help me out a little bit and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for worshiping like you did. I, I watched you worship. Thank you. I, I appreciate your worship. Amen. Oh, rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. I'd like to invite Abby's family to come up first and join us here at the altar. I haven't had the privilege of meeting her family yet. But I want to introduce Abby Chilcote. Come on down, guys. Thank you. Yeah, that's awesome. No hurry. We got all day. Amen. If you would stand, we're going to baptize Abby. Today we've talked about the cross on which Jesus died. It is because a sacrificial lamb was offered up, namely the Son of God, whose name is Jesus, became our sacrifice. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. So you either die one way or the other because of your sin. You'll either die in eternal damnation or you'll die in repentance to God for your sin. Abby chose the death of repentance over the death of eternity. It's not complicated. It's real simple. Without God, without the blood of Jesus, you will die in your sins. But Jesus came and provided for us remission, paid the bill for our sin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now we have free eternal life through Jesus Christ. Abby, 
because you've repented of your sins and made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins according to Acts 2 and 38, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. says that God is no respecter of persons. He made us all in his image. And if you're here today and you want to be made right with God, you want to get the sin out of your life and feel that freedom that we sang about earlier, that joy that's in the house, I invite you to come to this altar today. This is so simple and so easy. You won't escape if you neglect salvation, but if you'll come today, you can escape eternal damnation. You can escape the torture and pain of your own sin. You can find freedom here today. I invite you to come. Our ushers and elders and pastors are here waiting to pray with you. Make your way down to this altar as these souls have done and come to Jesus. All it is is simply saying, I'm sorry for my sin, Lord. I want a new life in you. He's waiting with open arms. Come. Come to Jesus. Knox. Knox, is he seven? I was seven when I got baptized, Knox. I know it's exciting to be like me, huh? Yeah. He said, big deal, right? <laughs> Knox felt God on his heart several weeks ago, and he began to tell his mom, Brittany, I need to be baptized. And she's like, okay, you know, that's good. We'll, we'll pray about that. We'll be. And she wasn't, you know, going to just jump into anything. Well, here lately, she said he's just been knocking the door down. Mama, I'm 100% ready, he said. I've got Jesus in my heart. I want to be baptized. Knox, understanding that Jesus died for your sins and you repented of your sins, Jesus also was buried. Do you believe that? And you know what happened when he was buried? He rose from the dead out of the tomb. And you're going to come up out of this water resurrected, okay? New. Lord, we thank you for Knox. And now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we baptize you for the remission of your sins. You are a new creature in Christ Jesus, our Lord.
let me see your arms. Everybody got two arms? All right. Here's what we say at the river. If you got two arms and a heart, you can give a hug. So we're going to be hugging around here for a little bit. Come up here, Rachel. Your shoes match your apron. I love that. Hey. If you're here for the first time, we want to say hey. And out there at our hayloft, you can leave your card that's in the back of your chair. You can leave that out at the hayloft, and we'll know you're here. We'll respond to you in appropriate ways. We'll pray for you because we know you're on a journey. We thank you for coming. We want to meet you. We want to know you. So visit our hayloft. If you see somebody wearing one of these, they can give you more information. All right? And leave your name at the hayloft if you're willing to drive for an elderly person to the Christmas party. We need some taxi service. No service here this Wednesday. No in-person this Wednesday. <laughs>